So um, first off, I know this uh, the hour is going long, and I want to thank all the reporters that are here. I want to thank those that are that are listening in, whether it's being live streamed or not. I'm not 100% sure, but if you are watching, uh, this is this is an important day. So thank you all for being here um, and and just listening to what the community leaders have to say. Um, I really want to just say it's been an honor to be the chief of police uh, for the Aurora Police Department and to serve this community. And I really need the community, whether you're angry and, and, and you're upset by this decision, the decision's been made. And although uh, these fine men and women behind me have given me accolades, which um, I, I feel in my heart and I hear you and I appreciate you, but it's not about me. It's about making sure that we have leaders in police departments, in this city, in this state, and across the country that are willing to stand up to the unions, that are willing to stand up to people that are doing it wrong, and are willing to fire officers that are doing it wrong. We, someone said it here best, we are commissioned to serve the community. Yeah. We cannot have a police department that does not do that, that does not follow that uh, aspect. And when they do wrong, and I'm not talking about a mistake of directives. I'm not talking about failing to fill out a piece of paper. I'm talking about abusing individuals. I'm talking about lying in police reports. I'm talking about criminal behavior. It cannot and will not and should not be in that building. Yeah. Yeah. And what I'm saying to all of you is that what I did was not popular. I understand that. Leadership is not a popularity contest. So I want to the community to know that this police department right now has men and women out there answering calls for service that took this oath, not because of me, but because of what is in their hearts. And the vast majority of the officers of the Aurora Police Department embraced the changes that are coming, are excited about the change that the consent decree will implement, better training, better equipment, better support in implementing directives that, that show best practices. So please still believe in those men and women because they're out there doing it for you right now selflessly. I have so much more to say, but I know that this has gone long. So with that, I will just open it up for questions for any of the panel and anyone that's here today. Thank you. Vanessa, would you ask a question about why do you think the city manager fired you? Well, I can only go with what the city manager claimed that he fired me for, which was overall leadership and overall management. And to that I say, sir, you're very wrong. And I, I'm, I have to stand up for myself. I wasn't going to go quietly into the night. I wasn't going to accept a resignation and just walk away when I know what this is driven by. And this is a political agenda. And there should not be partisan politics in public safety. Yes! Yes. Yes, sir. The records backlog. What did you know about the records backlog? What did you try to do about the records backlog? So uh, when you talk about the records backlog and the PRA report, PRI, excuse me, report that was put out, the records backlog obviously is something no one wants, no chief wants to have happen or have to be dealing with. But we have been dealing with this for years. Yeah. This is not a revelation. Yeah. This was a, for lack of a better term, a, a convenient moment for them to disparage me. And when that is the bottom line. The city manager said he didn't know about it until March 18th. Is that true? The city manager knew about the issues within records. He may not have seen the PRI report until uh, March 18th, but he knew that there was a situation in records. We called for a police audit in records. He actually congratulated me and gave me uh, kudos for actually bringing the, the problem to his attention and to other city managers. So, um, you know, I I feel for for council, I mean, for city manager Twombly, and I would like to give him some grace in this. I know that he is under extreme political pressure, whether he wants to admit it or not. I, I believe that uh, City Manager Twombly is a good man, and I know that he has stood by me on many press conferences before, and he has allowed me to do the right things. I didn't make these decisions that I've made in a vacuum. I have bosses that I answer to, and so I feel as though that right now that the timing is such that he is being pressured, but that yeah. is just my yeah. opinion. Did you know, that backlog impact investigation? I will tell you that I am not over there, sitting there and looking at, at the investigations for what I'm being told. Um, is that any case that was filed is not being um, is not 
being jeopardizing any of the any of those serious cases that are happening. Many of these reports were supplemental reports. I know some people are looking into the background of how that is. I know that um, I believe Dave Perry from the Sentinel met with some city uh, folks as well as uh, members of the police department to get a really breakdown of everything that's happening. But again, um, I think this was convenient. Um, of course, it's an issue, and I tried to face uh, issues head on and with transparency. And I want to thank Sergeant Poole for being here, and I want to thank that officer. Uh, their words were um, something that I'll walk away here from today with my health held high, and I appreciate their support. Yes, sir. You know, Vanessa, we are. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Well, obviously, um, I there's so much work that still needs to be done, so I'm disappointed that I won't be able to do that. Um, I believe that we had turned a corner and that with the consent decree and with the help of IntegraSure, uh, the company that was selected to be the independent monitor to implement that consent decree, I, I think we have a bright future here in the city of Aurora. But not only the consent decree, we have to talk about um, holding officers accountable and having whoever the next chief is holding, make hoping that they are going to do the same thing. And it's not going to be popular. And you may get a vote of no confidence, but you have to stand by your values. And I also want to wish uh, Division Chief Chris Jewell uh, the very best. He's a fine man, and I know that he has a lot of work to do now. But I am not going to put the keys under the mat and walk away. I am here for him if he needs me. And I know that there are great men and women that are leading this agency that still believe in the vision that we put forth together as an executive team. Chief, can you talk about what opposition you faced from the police union in giving the extension of that compliance? Well, uh, one of my first... Um, public press conference terminations that were done were, was unfortunately the, the photo of the officers that were mocking uh, the, the uh, memorial site of Elijah McClain. While I was speaking on my very, my second press conference I should say, um, they had put out a statement that I was unfit and that I, that I didn't know what I was doing and that I was having an hysterical or an emotional response, of course, due to the fact that I'm a woman, of course. Uh, but they have been um, clearly angered by some of the decisions that I've made and, and again, I have to do the job that the community has asked me to do and what city management had asked yes, me to do. Thank you. you know, Chief, we are live streaming to community, and my question is, with you going away or not going away silently, does that include a lawsuit? I am exploring all options. Uh, my attorney, Paul, Paul Greeson, is here with me uh, today, but there's nothing that I'm going to announce at this moment. Can you just give some light on what it was like to be the first female leader of this department and how much, whether you felt that part of this was your leadership maybe to get the ball in this decision? Well, first of all, I found an immense uh, feeling of pride. I've spent 26 years uh, in this agency. 20, December would have been my 26th anniversary. Um, and there are great people in, that, in this agency. There are great men and women that have come before me and that will come after me because they truly believe in the noble profession that is law enforcement. But with law enforcement has to change and we have to evolve and we have to listen to what our community is asking us. Now, I was told to mend the, the relationships with the community. And so to send a woman out to do that and to trust me to be able to do that and to communicate and to hold people's hands that were angry and to listen to them and to try to tell them, please still believe in APD because of the fine men and women that work there. So if I'm able to do that, but yet once we've crossed that bridge, now I'm told that I can't lead, that I don't have the, I guess, the management skills that they're looking for. Of course, my internal messaging could have always been better. I could have spent more time, but I was so busy, if you haven't noticed, we have had a few issues here in the city of Aurora the last two years. And my focus had to be with those folks in the community and asking them, what is it that you need? What can we do to build this trust? Yes, and so that was you. my focus. I have tried and have implemented what we, we were calling a new way plan forward, which was focused on the internal communication. But I'm not the only, I'm one person. And there is a extreme, there's a command staff in place that it should also be pushing my messages down and not diluting my messages to the troops because I do care about each and every one of them. What do you say to Commander Conley who said you did a good job with community but there was more to be in your future? Again, I believe that without the community, it's been said, you can't fight crime. 
and you won't have the support that the officers need when they need more equipment, when we need the voters to vote on pay raises through city council, when we, when we need those types of things. We can't do it without them, and we can't solve crime without them. And so I don't think it's a this and that. I think it's both. Do you have any messages for the officers that are still working every day and nearly in line? You know, um, I'm going to miss them, and I believe in them, and that I hope that, you know, those that are afraid to use their voice because of retaliation or because of, of things that they're worried about not getting special assignments, the time is now. We saw a call for police revolution uh, in the wake of George Floyd's death and other deaths uh, across the nation, and the time is now to stand up and don't be silent. If you feel like you need to speak as brave as Sergeant Poole here was today, that's what you need to do. And don't let the people, don't let the people that want to see this agency go backwards win. So please stand stand tall. Thank, thank you, Chief Wilson, for everything. Thank you. This is the last one. Okay. Um, for me, I, I'm not sure what's next. I, I, I didn't want this to be about me. I want it to be about the community. And when they said they were going to do this with or without me, uh, I felt it was important to be here. Um, what's next for me will be to con continue to look at ways that I can serve this community as well as law enforcement somewhere uh, in the future. So thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. This concludes our press conference.